everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Friday of the month, which means it's time for Plant Fueled with Dr. Nikki Davis, and she is going to be making Three Sisters Chili in the Instant Pot. Please welcome her to the show. How are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you, Chef AJ. It's so nice to see you. Well, I can't wait to see this recipe, and I'd like to know a little bit about the history of the three sisters, if you don't mind, because Dr. McDougall has talked about these, and there's a coin with three sisters on them. So tell us the origin story, if you don't mind. Yeah, so actually, interestingly, I had not heard of three sisters until the conference that you and I went to together, the Plantrition Conference. I was in a uh, a an uber on the way back to the airport on our way home and was sharing it with one of the other participants in the conference and uh, we were just talking about plant foods and I think maybe we were talking about McDougal I don't remember exactly but she said well have you heard of the three sisters and I said well what do you mean the three sisters and she said well corn beans and um and squash and she said there's this basically Native American history where these three crops tend to grow really well together. And not only that, but they're all very nice and starchy. So uh, so that was the first I'd heard of it. And she said, well, you should make something from the three sisters and talk about it on Chef AJ's show. And so that was kind of something I thought, well, yeah, that would be a good one. So now that we're kind of in fall weather and we're doing a lot of soups and stews, uh, getting my instant pot out more, uh, I thought, well, a chili would be nice. And then we could do a three sisters chili. So um, I actually just went online and found um, a good option for this that is completely uh, plant exclusive, um, totally whole food, plant-based, oil-free. And it's a recipe by Sharon Palmer. Are you familiar with Sharon Palmer? Have you heard yes, of her? I love her. I, she, she lives in California in Ojai. She's been on the show many times. But it, traditionally, does uh, Three Sisters Chili have animal products in it? So there are some, if you go online, you can see that they do add some, like I saw one that said beef, Three Sisters Chili with beef. Um, you know, That's three the brother, sisters, then. That, that must be the brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the estranged brother. <laughs> but we don't talk to him anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so the way that basically they grow is you, I guess you make a mound, you plant the corn stalks, and then the beans end up crawling up the corn stalks. So that's what they use for support. And then um, the squash is down around the base and the big leaves over the bottom kind of help keep the moisture in the soil. Um, so it, the three of them just really grow well together. And it turns out they also taste really good together too. So um, it would be nice to make something like this. And um, once I heard about this three sister pairing, I thought this is perfect. This will be a fun new recipe to try. Uh, but Sharon Palmer, um, I put a link in the show notes so that you can go to the original recipe. I also did put in the ingredients list and the basic in the show notes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm going to make it a little bit differently. So I am using the... Oh. Today, I'm going to be using this much more simple and a lot faster. You know, is there a particular squash that is usually made with? So the one that I'm going to be using is acorn squash. Um, so I think that you could probably, I mean, any squash will work, but, a, you know, any of the fall squashes or winter squashes, uh, you know, when you think of like acorn or butternut, they're they're all really good. But, you know, it's nice because it's a more a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit more satiating and filling. So that's what's great about beans and corn uh, and squash is that they're filling and very, very nutritious as well. Yeah, I love so, um So, yeah, so I'm excited to make this. Have you ever had delicata squash? It's so good. Um, I feel like I have. Is it... Um, is the skin like kind of like a brownish color? No, it's, it's like yellow or orangish and, and you can actually eat. Oh, skin. okay. Yeah. I, I'm sure I've had it before, but I, I haven't made it recently. So I don't really call it, 
but, um, but yeah, so I've got, I'm using acorn squash in mine today and I've already kind of started peeling it and cutting it up. I'm cubing that. The basic ingredients are there's going to be a lot of spices. There's obviously the beans and the corn and the squash. Uh, we're going to be using water with bouillon, uh, veggie bouillon, onion, garlic, celery, bell pepper, uh, and then, and some tomato paste and tomato sauce. So, uh, so I think this is going to be really yummy. Um, the first thing I'll do is, so I've got my instant pot, um, pot here, and I'm just going to start adding things in here. So basically once you start um, cutting things up and getting them, just throw it in there because everything's going to go all in all at once. And then the nice thing is by using the canned beans instead of dried, it's just three minutes on high on, uh, the instant pot. So it's pretty quick. If you want to follow her recipe for the instant pot, she uses dried beans. Sharon uses dried beans. And so you do have to, um, you know, put it on like the beans or chili setting on your instant pot, which is about a 30 minute cooking time. So it's going to take a little bit longer, but if you prefer the taste of, you know, dried beans that have been cooked, which, um, I think sounds nice. And if you've got the time, um, for me, I just wanted this to be a little bit of a quicker recipe, uh, cause that's kind of what I like to do at my house is do things, you know, easy and quick. Uh, and then the nice thing is that this will last in the fridge for, you know, probably five to seven days so that if you make a big batch, you can have a lot for the week. Um, kind of like, uh, batch cooking in a way. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab our beans. Now, she calls for one pound of dried beans, which is about three to four cans of beans. And I'm going to be using uh, just dark red kidney beans and also some pinto beans. And I'm just going to put those straight in there. But that's interesting that you said that Dr. McDougall has talked about the three sisters before, because I, you know, I obviously have followed Dr. McDougall for a really long time. I've got his shirt on drmcdougall.com. Um, I but I hadn't heard him talking about that before. That's where I heard it. Yeah, it's a fantastic idea. It's, you know, something you can grow these plants together and then eat them together. All right. And then I'm going to be using a couple of cans of pinto beans too. So I just wanted to do a couple of different beans here. So AJ, I'm curious to hear how your weather is where you are. Well, is I it think still it's, pretty nice. I, I think it's cold. I mean, it can get down to 38 <laughs> in the morning, but it's about 70s. It's really? I mean, it's nice. Every nice is relative. I mean, I I thought 116 was nice. I love hot weather. What can we tell you? Yeah, I know. I'm I'm similar. I mean, I like I like winter time just for you know it's just fun to have snow and I like to go snowboarding, but I definitely prefer the heat. Mm -hmm. All right, so I've got four cans of beans in there and then we're gonna add some water. So we're just gonna do seven cups of water. Yeah, it's been getting cold here in Salt Lake. Um, if it gets down to the thirties there, I'm assuming that you could get some snow sometimes, you know? We get snow somewhere near us, like when I think Weimard has snow and maybe, you know, 45 minutes away, like in, I think, Grass Valley or something. But I don't think we have snow here. Yeah. Just cold. Yeah, it's been getting really chilly here in the mornings. What's the lowest you get there? I mean, we'll get we'll get to zero, sometimes below zero. It's not as often as when I was living in Montana. Um, when I was doing my residency in Montana, it got below zero all the time. So here I would say it usually in the middle of winter when it's really cold, maybe it could stand to like the twenties is for the most part. Um, but, you know, I have to say for the, you know, it's really nice, like it'll snow and then it is actually fairly warm outside. <laughs> You know, and of course that's relative because it'll be like forties or fifties. Uh, so it's not, not terrible. Um, but that's just because now that I've lived in Montana and in Utah, um, Utah is much more mild climate than it ever was in Montana. So, 
Okay, so I added my seven cups of water, my four cans of beans, um, and then she calls for one vegan bouillon cube. And um, I actually like this better than bouillon paste. Uh, so I'm gonna use that instead. So instead of one cube, it would just be one teaspoon of this paste. And one of the ingredients that I'm not using that she calls for is um, something called juniper berries. Um, you have to buy them whole and then grind them up. And I just did not have those. So I won't be using those. So I'm gonna use another teaspoon of bouillon just to give it a little bit extra flavor. So I'll be doing two, two teaspoons. Is that what, what um, gin is made out of? Juniper berries? I don't know. I hadn't heard of it until this recipe, so. And where do you get juniper berry? Well, um, I actually did. Um, I was at Whole Foods this morning and they had them there. So they sold them right there at Whole Foods. Um, but they're whole, so you'd have to, and um, so you'd have to have like a mortar and pestle and grind it up yourself, which I do have. I just would need to pull it out of storage. Hmm. They're used to flavor soups, stews, stuffing, and pickled foods. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. It says people with kidney problems shouldn't take, shouldn't have juniper berries. Interesting. I wonder why. I don't know, but that's the first, second thing that came up. Huh. No, gin is made from wheat or I, I don't know why I've heard of juniper berries. Maybe it's vodka. Something, some liquor is made with juniper berries. I know that. Huh. Maybe somebody who's watching can do a little yeah. searching for us and figure that out. So the next thing I'm going to add is the uh, acorn squash. So you just... Uh, peel it and then cube it. Um, uh, I don't know if you've tried peeling acorn squash before, but it's tricky because, it, oh, you know, yeah. you've got like those grooves all the way down it. So what I ended up doing is I, um, I just peeled it to get, you know, what I could. And then if you cut it basically where it isn't peeled, um, cut it on those edges, then you can peel it off the edges. Um, so you just kind of go around and cut it into, into slices uh, and then peel it as you go. Uh, one small acorn squash uh, should be about two and a quarter cups of these uh, diced, once you've got it diced up. What size Instant Pot do you have? It's the big one. What Eight is quarts? that like a yeah? They have a ten quart. ten quarter. So you might have the ten quart. Yeah, huh? it it might be the ten. Um, I I remember getting whatever the biggest was because I figured, you know, I I like to make a lot at once because if I'm going to be making something, I want to make a ton of it so I have leftovers. I think you do that too, right? You say always buy the biggest one because right. <laughs> leftovers are great. Yep. Because you can always use a bigger pot to make some, you know, smaller amount, but you can't make a bigger amount in a smaller pot, right? That's right. Okay. I've got this nice and cubed up now. So I'm going to throw that lovely acorn squash in there. All right. And then. And we've got our onion. Now I messed up my onions earlier because they made me cry and I didn't want to cry in front of you, AJ. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, we're going to throw that in there. Oh, and I forgot to tell you. So I've got a couple of really um, fun things going on. Um, so the first thing is I got a new dog. Uh, so she is the sweetest little thing. I got her about a week. All of these dogs and some cats.
as well. So, um, so yeah, we got her about a week ago and her name's Charlie. I'm going to go grab her so you can meet her real quick. Okay. That, that's my husband's name, by the way, actually it's Charles. While she's oh there. yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that she will be really good friends with Bailey. You have to talk so that it'll trigger you the zoom. Here's Charlie. She's right here. You see her? <laughs> Isn't she a sweetheart? I just woke her up. She was napping. But this is my little sweetie. This is my little new sidekick. She is so cute. How old All right. is she? How old is she, is Dr. It, Davis? She's they yeah, they think that she's about two, just based on her teeth. I guess you can tell about how old. But yep, she's about two years old. Huh. She looks but she's so pretty sweet. timid. She's getting used to us. <laughs> she looks All right, so I'm gonna see if I can get sweet. her to yeah, she really is. All right. We'll let her get back to napping. And then you know, you're, you're, the other you're, really fun thing. Um, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, you've at least for me, you've been freezing up a little bit from time to time. Just so. Okay. Good to know. Well, hopefully that doesn't continue. I'm not sure if there's anything I can do to fix that. I'll just I'll just pray to the technology ethers and yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is, uh, and while I'm doing that, so the other fun thing that is going on is I'm going to be going to Belize. So I'm going to be going there and doing a, uh, cooking and adventure weight loss retreat for women. Uh, it's going to be very small, um, so there won't be very many spots available. Um, but I am putting it out there that if I don't have dates yet, we don't have itinerary yet. But if it's something that you are interested, please reach out to me. The best way is to just go onto my website, which is drnikidavis.com, D-R-N-I-K-I-D-A-V-I-S.com. And if you click on retreats, you'll have a, a little form that you can fill out and just say, hey, I'm interested. Let me know when you've got more details. Uh, and then I will send you information once I have it. So you don't have a date yet? No, nope, no dates yet. Well, so it's just gonna... brand new. Just made the decision to, to do this for next year. Okay, but who's going to watch Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I'll be gone. I'll be gone for a week. Um, but I've got a really woman um, in town here in Salt Lake City who's taken care of my pets in the past. And she's wonderful. So that's where she would go. All right. And then I just added, um, so I ended up doing, uh, for my minced garlic, instead of just doing it myself, I just have minced garlic in this little jar. So it makes it much easier. And, uh, it calls for three cloves minced. So I ended up just doing, um, three teaspoons of the minced garlic from there. And then the next thing we're going to do is add celery. So three stalks of celery diced. So I'll start cutting those up. Are you having any more freezing problems? No, thank you. Not, not, not since I mentioned it to you. Okay. Well, see, that's all you have to do is just acknowledge it and then- <laughs> And then, then it goes away. Problems. <laughs> right? Yep. Maybe I spoke to that in our. Oh no, did it freeze again? Uh, yeah, that's okay. Okay, well, thankfully I was just cutting up celery. That's okay if it freezes while I do that. Okay, am I still with you? You're with me loud and clear. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm adding in my celery now, my three stalks of celery that have been chopped up. It says diced. I know these are probably not considered diced, but chopped up. 
I'm All curious. right, and then we're going to add in our one bell pepper. Curious why you pick Belize. Yeah. And Karen Gaylor would like to know what part of Belize? Uh, so honestly, this is so brand new that I don't even know what area of Belize um, it is. Um, I know it's going to be in Belize. And why Belize? Well, I guess why not? Um, I have been to uh, Costa Rica several times and really loved it. Belize is um, you know, a couple of countries, I think, to the north of Costa Rica. Um, but there is um, a retreat center that whole food plant-based uh, cooking. And so that's where we're going to be headed. That is so cool. retreats so that's something that I think it's really nice to get together with people hey guys I don't know what, what do I do if the freezing's on her end it's kind of in the middle of COVID so kind of had to say all right that's not going to happen right now so I've been kind of patiently waiting and wanting do something like this and um, was able to find she gone a uh, really fun really great place to go but again I know the details I don't have any of the details yet but fill out that form and then I will let you know as soon as I know anything about where exactly it will be what the itinerary you, is you know dr davis some people are saying maybe come back in i don't know if that's going to help like you know because it, it is a, oh. you you know some people are saying okay. maybe you should leave and come back because i'll stay here and i'll talk to everybody okay yeah. I, mean, I can do that yeah that, that's one thing we could try be, i will be right back be right back okay. i'll be right back so it's just me. We're still live and I can answer any questions while we're waiting for Dr. Davis to come back. But in the meantime, I'll just tell you who's on the show tomorrow. On weekends, we try to do the show earlier when possible at 9 a.m. So we can start the day earlier and everybody can do what they like to do on the weekends. It's the first Saturday of the month, which means it's time for the culinary medicine show. That's Dr. Colin Zhu. He's a chef and a doctor also with Love Life Telehealth like Dr. Nikki Davis. And he's going to be making a festive fall baked stuffed apple or stuffed apples. And then on Sunday, we have Margot Freetag, who wrote a book called Plant Powered Punks. And she's going to be talking about how to raise kids eating plants. And hopefully this will be the new and improved. Dr. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I changed to a different internet. So I'm hoping that that maybe improves the connection. We'll see. So far, so good. So far, so good. All right. So I freeze. Is there anything I was talking about? Um, well, why, why Belize? And you mentioned there's a there's a culinary center there. I wonder, is that the one that, did I have them on the show? I just, I've had so many people now. Yeah, D Vegan Dave. Didn't I have them on the show? Is that- Possibly think that are the, the she she's a she colette wait what's her name gosh i think i've had i think i've had these guys on the show if it's the same one i'm thinking of let me let me look okay i'll let you know it's a guy named vegan okay. Dave, right yeah that might oh she's still freezing Yep, it's the I know I know what it is. Dr. Davis, can you hear me? Yes. Dr. Okay, great. Is it called the Villa Kula Cooking and Adventure Eco Retreat Center in Placencia, Belize? Possibly. Because um, is it with uh Naomi? Yeah, Naomi, Naomi? Dave. Naomi yeah, Naomi. Green. Yeah, Dave is Naomi's husband, vegan mm -hmm. Dave. We've both been on the show. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. All I right. Like Nice. 
Well, I'm sorry. If it, if it keeps freezing, I might, maybe I'll try to switch my internet back again. Sorry about that. I don't think we had this issue last time. Yeah, this is the first time with you. I know. Normally it goes pretty well. Yeah. All right. And then I am just chopping up this one pepper. I'm also going to add. The instant pot is getting pretty full here. Are you still hearing me or am I freezing? Uh, no, I am. I am hearing you. Okay, good. Good, good. Yeah, that place looks great. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, and, you know, I'll be there. So it'll be fun to get to hang out with some other women and just have a really fun time and eat delicious food. And we all cook together too. So it'll be, it's not that you're just going to get served. You get to actually learn how to cook these meals. Um, so it's, it's going to be fantastic. Um, okay. And then I've got my bell peppers and I'm going to add my bay leaves. So three bay leaves. Sounds like three bay leaves. Bay leaves. Yeah, bay leaves. <laughs> Again, I am putting your recipe in the show notes now. I have to wait till we start to do it. Okay. Yep. Going in right now. Yeah. So this is, again, this is a, a recipe by Sharon Palmer. I'm changing it a little bit to make it a little bit quicker. Um, and then, but other than that, um, you know, besides just instead of using the dried beans, I'm just using canned beans. All right. And then we're going to add some dried sage. All right. So that is going to be two teaspoons. Hey, what are you making for Thanksgiving? Please don't freeze. Thanks. Pretty much all, all the things, the main things that I make for Thanksgiving. So if you go back and search, you know, Thanksgiving, Chef AJ, Dr. Nikki Davis, uh, You'll, you can watch that show and see all the things that I typically make. So I make a total loaf. Uh, I make mashed potatoes and gravy. I make stuffing. I usually do like an apple crisp for dessert. Oh, am I back? Oh, you're muted, AJ. I don't know how I, oh, I was saying, what's the secret? Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's probably why you didn't answer me. <laughs> what's the secret <laughs> making good and great mashed potatoes? I've never been great at mashed potatoes. Okay, so my, at least what I do that works really well is I will uh, cook the potatoes in my Instant Pot first. So I get, I think a three pound bag of potatoes, cook them up in the Instant Pot, get them nice and soft. And then I use a mixer and I just mix on high with a little bit of either the water that's left over from cooking in the Instant Pot or some plant milk, like oat milk or something, and just whip it. Um, and those turn out beautifully. Uh, and that's, I don't add anything else besides that. Uh, and because the gravy always is so, so delicious that we, I just add that over the top, but that's how I make my mashed potatoes and they turn out really, really good. 
So when you say whip it, do you mean like with a hand mixer? No, a hand mixer. Yep. Yep. So, uh, so it's, um, so what are, what are those big hand mixers you can buy? I can't remember the, the brand KitchenAid. So those big stand mixers. Um, so I use a large one, again, a really big one that I can fit almost all of those potatoes in there. And then it just mixes it on high. And it doesn't become too gummy. Not if you, you have to be careful. If you add too much, um, so you just have to be lazy and fluffy and whipped, basically. Okay, and um, I added in the two, and now I'm going to be adding in a half a teaspoon. How are we doing with freezing? Am I staying on? Yeah. Well, temperature wise, I'm a little cold. No, just kidding. It's, it's, it's going in and out. What I'll do is I'll put in the, I'll, I'll put in the show notes and I'll apologize for it in advance for people watching the replay because there's not yeah, much yeah. we can do about it. Yeah. Sorry about that. cup of frozen corn. Frozen. Oh, guys, what can I do? This is so frustrating. I know. Uh. If anybody has any suggestions, I'm all ears. I don't know how to fix it. Oh, she's coming back on another device. Nice. Yeah, because you're frozen. Now she's, there you go. Okay, I'm going to try. I tried something else to see if that works. Well, wait, you are a rocket scientist. So can't you fix this? No. <laughs> I know, right? I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> Although I haven't been one of those in a while. I'm a just little out of practice. A little, little rusty with the. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm just adding in my uh, cup of frozen corn, but I, I'm so sorry that it keeps freezing on us today. All right. And are you still hearing me now, AJ? I am hearing you. Perfect. Good. Okay. So got our frozen corn. So now I'm going to add in my one cup of tomato sauce and a six ounce can of tomato paste. Kathy Hester was on this week making all kinds of things just from a can of tomatoes. It was pretty cool. Really? Yeah, it wow. was really nice. She made uh, mar marinara sauce or pasta sauce salsa and what was the third thing ketchup just from using ketchup. wow yeah oh that's great yeah i'm gonna have to check out that show so and then she you know if you she put a thing for a pdf so it was really cool oh neat because you can always get canned tomatoes everywhere yes oh yeah well that's one of the things that uh jeff novick says you should always have uh, in your pantry is 
is canned tomatoes because it's something that you can use easily to just put together a quick meal. You know, if you've got some grains and some frozen vegetables, uh, as long as you've got something like that to kind of bring it together, then you can make a quick and easy meal. All right, so I just added in the tomato sauce and the tomato paste. I like the fire roasted ones. Have you ever tried those? They're pretty good. I do. The, you're talking about the tomato, yeah. like diced tomatoes yeah. that have the mm -hmm. fire roasted? Yeah, those are really good. Oh, this mint smells delicious. So I've, I don't know that I've ever done mint in a uh, chili recipe. It should be interesting. Mint, that, that is mint. I've never heard of that in chili. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, yep. so uh, two I'm, tablespoons. I'm, my friend is texting me and saying, I'm perfectly clear, but you're pixelated and freezing regularly. So, um, you, maybe when you see okay. that we can fix it in the future. Yeah, it's too bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that, you guys. With my internet today. Thing up. Okay. All right. So let me just make sure I haven't missed anything. I think I've got everything in there. Okay, good. And that's pretty much maxed out my, my big one. You can probably see on where it shows. Uh, it just shows the max line. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is a big one. This holds a lot. Still freezing up there, AJ. Oh, I know. I, I'm just writing sincere apologize. Okay, there we go. So at least they know that we know. The live viewers know, but people watching the replay might. Yeah. Which is a bummer. Right, right. All right. So, uh, so I put Ooh. this in the instant pot. Just like I said, I just threw everything in and uh, put it on. Uh, high for three minutes mona wants to know where you got your top do they they don't have them anymore at the mcdougall website correct i don't think they sell I, that particular i one. don't think so i got this one a while ago it yeah they were they were just kind of selling what they had like the little amount that they had i just loved it but I feel like I got it probably at least five years ago, if not more. Okay, Good. all right. Um, so any questions from people today? I don't know if you had any people submit questions for me. Oh my gosh, I didn't even look, thank you. Yes, probably, let me look. Yeah. I'm watching you. And While we're waiting for this. Here we go. And I don't Yep, here we go. I'm hoping that we'll have enough time, but you know, oh, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So this is from Michelle. Can you please ask Dr. Nikki Davis if she can give me any tips to recover my gut and system from drinking 15 milliliters of lactulose for a SIBO breath test or SIBO breath test? Um. So that's, yeah, so that's just a test. Um. That's not something that, should affect your microbiome all, all that much. Uh, but basically it would be the same thing I would tell anyone who is looking to improve their gut flora, um, help all of that is to just make sure that you're eating a high variety of whole plant foods um, so that you're getting lots of fiber, lots of different nutrients, um, lots of things that multiple different good bacteria eat on and thrive on so that you have a really good um, mix of uh, of bacteria in your gut. So it's really as simple as that, just making sure that you're just eating a really healthy whole food plant-based 
diet, um, no added oils, no processed foods, and obviously no animal foods. Okay, but she should recover quickly. Oh, yeah, yes. Yep, I think I had one of those tests a long time ago. And this is from Laura. Uh, my cousin is a 54-year-old teacher with a lot of joint pain in her wrist, hands, elbows, and painfully tight muscles. She walks some for exercise, and her integrative doctor has put her on Ziflamend. Testing for autoimmune diseases and vitamin deficiencies showed nothing wrong. She eats the standard American diet, but did say cutting back on sugar and fast food has helped. Can you possibly think what could be causing this pain? She doesn't like the taste of vegetables, and I've explained it takes time for taste buds to adjust after being so accustomed to sugar, fat, and salt. Can you suggest a way for her to transition from sad to eating more healthfully without having too much withdrawal from the bad stuff? Mm. So this might be a case of improving slowly over time. So that so there are some people who once they find out about the benefits of a you know, plant exclusive diet, they just do it overnight and they're successful and they maintain that forever. Um, I didn't do it that way. Not necessarily that I didn't want to, but as I learned more and more, I improved my diet over time, over years. Um, so sometimes Uh, so I, I will say that as a doctor, especially a plant-based doctor, a lifestyle medicine doctor, I would never tell someone you should go eat an impossible burger or a beyond burger. But I do think that there is a place for it, that if someone is trying to transition away from animal foods, that that might make it a little bit easier. It's just one step forward. And then as they get used to not having those animal foods, then they can slowly transition away from that and doing more like a healthy uh, burger. So let's see. I've got these actual veggie burgers um, that are completely plant-based and oil-free. It's a great alternative. Um, so it kind of depends on, you know, how, how difficult it is for her to, to get going. But doing some of those transition foods, one of the best meat alternatives that I've found that is um, very minimally processed is soy curls. And it's um, literally just chewy strips that look very much like meat. You can marinate them. You can add them in lots of things. You can chop them up small and make it almost like a, you know, kind of like a ground beef, but they work for a lot of different things. And it's so minimally processed, but it's a really good meat alternative um, that I still think it's an option for people who are eating completely plant exclusive because the only ingredient is soy. So minimally processed that it's great for that. So she may not be someone who's ready to just eat a block of tofu, um, but soy curls are a really good option to make it seem like a little bit of a meatier substance. Um, you know, I, I definitely don't recommend the, the plant-based cheeses um, because they're so high in fat, so high in oil. But again, if this is a transition from an animal-based cheese to a plant-based cheese, to me, that's, that's a step forward. So you move to that and you try that for a little while and then, you know, move forward as you can and just start. thinking about what are the things that she really enjoys. Uh, so if she can tolerate beans, then maybe just trying to add in a cup of beans every day. If she likes potatoes, I would say most people really like potatoes, potatoes and sweet potatoes, add in a couple of potatoes every day and just start adding things in, not necessarily taking things away. Um, but as you add in, if you eat two potatoes a day, you're going to be pushing out some of those other foods because you're just going to be too full to eat some of the other foods that you're used to. So those are kind of some of the things that I would do in some healthy foods that you enjoy, maybe think about some transition foods that'll help you get closer to the goal. And hopefully I didn't freeze during all of that. <laughs> um, a little, unfortunately, a little bit, but uh, Brittany, hi, Brittany, Rudy, oh, congratulations. Shoot. And she loves your sweatshirt. And Linda and others are asking, what brand of frozen burger was it that you pulled out of your freezer? Oh, yes. So these are... Uh, I don't, so AJ, you and I have both been 
You know, the one you, thing that I was missing was veggie burgers because you had to make your own. Are you wearing ear things? Yes. Do you, you want know, to take those out? Oh, would that know, work? I didn't even know you were wearing them. That often causes the problem. I, with your blonde hair, I couldn't oh. see it. Oh my gosh. I didn't even know you were wearing them. I couldn't see them until just now. Oh my gosh. Hey, do you normally wear these on the show? Yeah, we do. Try it okay, without. Well, let's, let's try that. See if that helps. It'll probably be a little bit more echoey. Yeah, but I think it might not freeze. I don't know why ear pots. Uh, anyway, so what? what's the brand? I okay, didn't... that's good to know. Okay, so um, they're just called Action. Well, didn't work because she's still freezing, but I know that the brand is called the actual burger. Oh, this is frustrating. It almost always works, but you know. It's called. Know. Okay. Didn't work. But it's called, it's called uh, the actual burger, guys. It's called the actual burger. And I will look actual it Actual veggies. That's cool. Here's another one. I don't know if, you, if you're still seeing me, but here's another that, one. The purple that's burger. That's very comes cool. In I, you know, I've never seen that, but it says it's uh, nationwide, and they have them at Sprouts and Whole Foods. Actual veggies. Yeah, they're excellent. And my favorite one is the black burger. So they come in all different colors. There's the purple, there's the green, and the black one is my favorite. Wow. Here's one. Oh, there's one called the actual green burger. That's yeah, that's the first one that I showed you, the green burger. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Uh, Linda, they burgers. have them at Whole. Linda, they have them at Whole Foods and Sprouts, and you have both of these up here in Sacramento. So. And I'm not ignoring your comment. She has come in and out already, and that hasn't helped. Yeah, sorry, guys. We could practice another time, though, if you think that, you know, or. Yeah. But you never had this happen before, so I don't know if there's something going on or. No, and last month it was set up the same way, and we didn't yeah. have any issues last month, so I'm not sure why it's having issues today. Maybe you can ask your provider or somebody else. I've got, got one more question from Bonnie. How, do, do you do, <laughs> this is like a perfect setup because it's like, could have written it better. Do you do telehealth? If so, how do you set it up? <laughs> yes. So I see patients, uh, so I'm licensed in 12 states. And I practice lifestyle medicine. So I'm not your primary doctor, but I can definitely help kind of talk you through some of um, your, your main issues. And, but for the most part, it's people who want a supportive plant-based doctor. Um, they want somebody who's familiar with lifestyle medicine because they're wanting to improve their health, get off medications. Um, and I work through a company called Love Life Telehealth. The website is love.life slash telehealth you can also go onto my website and there's a link on my website to be able to book appointments i also have a list of all the states that i'm licensed in on my website so if you just go to drnikidavis.com d-r-n-i-k-i-d-a-v-i-s.com you can go to book an appointment it'll show you all the states and there will be a link there that you can book an appointment great thank you how long does it take in the instant pot so it's three minutes uh, because the beans are already cooked. Uh, it's only three minutes basically to cook the squash and the onions. Um, and so it takes a little bit of time and for it to preheat. So it's preheating right now.
Well, at least we got to say that she looks good when she freezes, you know, some guesses. Want... So she, she freezes beautifully. Just does the chili as well, I'm sure. Maybe I should say good night, Gracie. Tell her that it's too frustrating. Thank you guys for your patience. But if you're watching, I know, yeah, I, I feel like maybe we should just say goodbye because it's it's very frustrating for the people watching, and I'm afraid for the people watching the replay as well. Well, I'll take a vote. Can you still hear me, AJ? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, the people still want to see the chili. So can you hurry it up? <laughs> ah, even with the freezing. What I was going to say is once the, once the chili comes out, I can, I'm going to take pictures of it and I'll post it on my Facebook and my Instagram so that people Because it's going to be a little while longer, probably. I want people to have to wait with all the freezing happening. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know for, I, you know, I wish I had a solution. Sometimes like we, we did try going in and out, may, maybe rebooting your computer, making sure you have the most recent version of Zoom and Google Chrome and those kind of things are just things we check at the beginning. But um, I'm making a bigger deal yeah. about it happening. We all know this happens. Yes, but you don't see all the nasty comments that we get on our uh, pages when things like this happen. I don't mean from the live audience, but anything. So, all right. I mean, if you guys want to hang out, we'll hang out. But it's um, we've got a frozen Dr. Davis. Again. She needs the wire. I'm just going to say that it, uh, if she had it, um, one of these wires. Should I, can I show her when she comes back what it is? Um, and can yeah, we tell her? We'll, we'll, to do this instead of. She's uh, still frozen. Wait, okay. If she uses this instead of the Wi-Fi. Hi, Dr. Davis. <laughs> the vagaries of a live show. That's so funny, the vagaries. But my dad used to use that word vagaries, the vagaries of old age. Um, I want to tell her a solution, but she seems to be still frozen, so. She's still I there. can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. My husband was saying you can use one of these. What's this called, Charles? Uh, it's, it's the wire that goes directly if, from the internet. Yeah, instead of using Wi-Fi, if this is something that keeps happening, but we'll test it next time. Yeah, so. I'm going to do that. I'll just use a, yep, I'll do something like that. So it's plugged in. Yeah. Um, somebody saying it's not a network issue. It's a computer processing issue or even use the phone. I mean, I, you know, a lot of times people use the phone and we don't seem to have problems That's when true. using a phone. So, and since, uh, yeah, um, we I'm are gonna, here for, um, Dr. Susan says we're here for Dr. Davis and you. Yay. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm going to try doing it on my phone. Vagary, an unexpected and inexplicable change in a situation of someone's behavior. That's funny. We have we have we have, we have a thesaurus here. That I love words like that. My favorite word is discombobulated. Just so you know, I don't even know how to spell it. Let's see if the phone works. And we're trying everything today. Yep. Hello. Hey, you look, you look good. If Is this works that better, then, well, so far, if it works, I'm gonna. Okay. I'm You're gonna, gonna look at the ceiling for just a second. Hang on. If it works, I'm thinking, why didn't I think of this sooner? Please Hang go on. over the ingredients. If you're watching on Facebook, just so you know, um, you can't see things the way the YouTube audience can because this is a YouTube show. So if you just go over to YouTube, you'll be able to see everything It's listed. It's called the show notes. It's under the video. If you click more and then the written recipe is right there. And also on YouTube, we have a very active chat where people are asking questions and talking to each other. Okay. Yeah. Favorite word is okay. wherewithal. Well, so far it's great. And your kitchen looks great. Okay, good. All right. So, okay. So what do we need to go over the that we missed while I was frozen? The answer to every question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you want to no. see Charlie again? You want to yeah. see my dog again? Yeah. 
this will be amazing if it works. And why didn't I think of it sooner? I don't know. Yep. Yeah. People got to go to well your world. So sorry that it's taken so long. Yep. All right. Here's my little sweetheart. This is Charlie, who we just rescued from Texas. She was sleeping, but I think that she would be a really good pal for Bailey. You want to meet Bailey someday? Would that be fun? Yeah. <laughs> He's very, very sweet. And I love her ears. I know. Aren't they so cute? Little floppy ears. Mwah. So this is Charlie with an eye. She My seems girl, very, she seems very loving. She is. She's very loving, very sweet. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let her get back to her napping. And was somebody well, you... asked about the ingredients? They wanted yeah. To know so this, this seems to be working, which means that, you know, it was computer more than the Wi-Fi then, huh? Yeah. I'm wondering if that my iPad just needs to be rebooted or something. There must have been something going on with it. Yeah, that's what that's, that's normally the one I use, but yeah. Yeah, that's what one of the neighbor what one of the viewers was saying. And I don't know why I didn't think of the phone sooner. Sorry about that. I know, my fault too. I mean, I'm the rocket scientist, right? I should have thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But our chili is going to take a little while. Um, so it's even though it's three minutes, it has to preheat. It's still preheating. And it's because it's completely filled. Uh, it takes a while to get all the way up to where it's hot enough. Uh, so and I and I don't think you probably heard me because I was frozen so much. But I was saying that if you wanted to, we could I'm, I'm going to be taking photos of the chili when I'm done. Uh, and I'm happy to post those on Facebook and Instagram and send those to you, AJ, so that you can share those with people so they don't have to wait. Um, the only way I could share it is probably in, if I put it in the thumbnail. So I, I mean, you know, yeah. we could, you could, this, you could, you could put it underneath, you know, the Facebook, if you want to the Facebook that's here, you know, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, that might be a good thing if you did that as well. Yeah, I mean, and it, you know, there's a chance it may only be another few minutes um, because it only has to cook for three, but um, yeah. oh, it's going to take thing, a little bit of time to get get up to, to the temperature. Also, if you cut your up your ingredients in advance, it, it'll go faster in general. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, everything I put in there is, is all diced up and, and small, so. Yeah, no, I meant like, you know, take it, cutting the chili live and uh, oh. the celery live, you know, those kind of things, those things. You can get it to go faster because if you, um, yeah, they want you to take the freezer of uh, uh, the burgers out of the freezer again, because you were freezing yes. up when they did it. They'd like to see that. Um, and there's a question, if you've ever converted any patients to whole food plant-based. Sorry, what was that question? Have you ever converted any patients to whole food plant-based? Yes, many, 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 many. So I get, um, I get patients who are already whole food plant-based who come to me and just want support or they want help with their medications. But then I also get a lot of people who are brand new to it and they say, help me. What, what do I do? I'm eating a standard American diet and I need help. Uh, and so helping them transition. Okay. So these are the, these are the veggie burgers that I like. Uh, so it's called actual veggies. So it's up there at the top, actual veggies. Uh, and they come in like different colors is how they so this is the actual purple burger. Uh, this one's got lots of beets in it. Uh, and then I've got this other one, the actual green burger. Um, and then I was saying earlier that the other one that's my favorite is the black burger. It's got black beans in it. Uh, that one's really good too. But this one's really good. It's got broccoli, spinach, kale, no oil. So that's one thing that was really hard for me to find for a really, really long time was a good um, you know, store-bought veggie burger that doesn't have oil in it. Uh, pretty much, you know, 99.9% .9 of them do, even if they're, you know, full of veggies and all that, um, they're still going to have oil in them. So this is one of the only ones out there that you can buy. And it's just a lot of the health food stores that are big and delicious and oil free. Yeah, that looks good. But they, they, they're always, they always have some kind of legume in there, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Usually. Well, I don't know if all of them do. I know the black one does, but. Um, yeah, I, th I think they all do. Yeah, this one, the purple one has white bean in it. Um, yeah, white bean in the gray one as well. Okay. 
Nice. Has it even come up to pressure yet? No, it's still, <laughs> I think it's just because it's so filled. I, I was thinking, well, it'll only be three minutes. So, you know, I'll have plenty of time at the end, but yeah, unfortunately it's just taking a little bit of time for it to get up to pressure, get to temperature. Yeah. And what was the liquid in it? Uh, just water. So it's water with uh, bouillon. So yeah, I use know, the bouillon. If, 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 if you had boiled the water in advance, I think it would have gone quicker as well. Yeah. 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 Well, live and learn, live and learn. Yeah. Now we know. Um, and Dr. Davis is such a great guest. Thanks for hanging in there, everyone. And that says, thank you. Um, and <laughs> I was telling people, because I said a lot of times when people freeze, they, they have this like funny expression, you know, like, and then, you know, and I said, but you, yeah. we were saying, and people were agreeing that you, when you freeze, you freeze very beautifully. So you, you, oh. know, you looked, even though you were frozen and that's why sometimes I couldn't tell if she was frozen or just not talking. Cause you just looked so good frozen, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so well at least we know we learned something that if this happens in the future I'm going to ask the guests because most people do have a smartphone these days and so we'll ask them to just switch to that right away yeah well we'll place the pictures on dr I well yeah you free you freeze very well dr davis's social media and then she'll post it on on facebook here i don't know if we can yeah i don't think you post it on youtube yeah yeah, at photos. I don't think you can post yeah. photos in YouTube comments. Okay. If you can. So thanks. Oh, and uh, we'll see you after Thanksgiving. Hope you have a happy holiday. And, you know, when yeah. you get the information for your Belize retreat, let us know. We can start adding that to the show notes as well. And if you want a consultation, really? the link to uh, Dr. Davis is right below in the show notes. That sounds good. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. And we have one of your colleague, colleagues from Love Life Telehealth on tomorrow making festive fall apples, Dr. Colin Zhu. Oh, great. Well, that'll be a fun show. Great. Thanks, Dr. Davis. And thanks all of you for okay. getting there with some of the tech problems. We really appreciate you. And please do come back tomorrow a bit earlier at 9 a.m. Pacific time.